welcome back to another episode of Cascadia Kayak Angler. Today, I'm in North Central Washington on the Colville Indian Reservation at Omac Lake. Omac Lake is a long, deep, narrow lake that is, uh, has no drainages out of it. So it has drainages coming in, but it doesn't drain out. Um, so through evaporation, the lake has become very alkaline. And you can see on the rocks uh, behind me here, that white discoloration from that al alkalinity. Uh, because of this, the lake really can't hold uh, too many species of fish, but it does hold uh, one of the best places to catch very large Lahontan or Lahontan cutthroat trout in Washington State. Now these fish were brought here by the Colville tribes uh, from Pyramid Lake, which has a very famous uh, large cutthroat trout fishery. And these fish are extremely aggressive. They can grow to very large sizes. They've caught 18 pound trout out of this lake. Um, I've been out here now uh, for just a few hours this morning and already caught several fish over 20 inches. And yesterday, I caught well over 25 fish, the smallest being in the 14 inch range. So there's a lot of opportunity here to connect with some very large fish. Uh, it's, there's not a lot of competition. Um, Part of the reason for that is that you have to buy a separate fishing license in order to fish here. You can buy a Colville tribal fishing license from a variety of vendors in town, in the towns that are on the reservation, or uh, nearby the reservation. So it's a really cool lake. It's always been on my bucket list to do, and it's definitely living up to its reputation as an amazing fishery. So yesterday, I scouted out the lake a little bit since it's the first time I've ever fished this lake and I tried a variety of lures. Um, I tried maglip, 2.5s, spoons, some pulling spoons, and I also tried uh, these Brad Super Bait Mini Cut Clubs. I got fish on. Yeah, and so I tried these mat, these uh, mini super bait that uh, mini cut plug super baits that Brad's makes, and uh, they were by far the favorite. Um, another beautiful little cut through. And after reviewing a lot of that underwater video, I learned so much about what lures were working and which ones weren't. All of them had fish following them. Um, but the super baits were definitely triggering way more strikes than any other lure, so that's what I ended up going with. All right. So you can see some of these I'm just running naked without a flasher. This one I'm running behind my camera so I can get some more underwater video to share with you guys. It's a pink mini. I put a few beads back there behind it uh, to push those hooks back and I'm just running a couple number fours. I'm just running that 18 inches behind the lead dropper with the camera. Whereas on this other rod here, show you, I'm running a little bit different rig. Here I'm running a dropper with about 24 inches back to a small herring dodger and then to another mini super bait. This color seems to be one of the more popular ones. Unfortunately, this is the Seahawk pattern. Fortunately, I only brought one with me of this pattern. So I'm kicking myself for doing that. But yeah, I'm running just a 24 or 36 inch liter behind the Dodger. It seems to be getting more attention and I think that a lot of that has to do with the Dodger. All right, let's get back underway. I'm going across the big ledge right now. This is a good area to troll flies. We see these big gravel bars that extend out. There's not a lot of them in the lake. I got the double one. <laughs> Gonna have to be a big guy first. 
keep it on the same time. Got a little few of So I was varying my speed up there quite a bit, going down to 1.7, up to 2.6. But I noticed when I was reviewing the footage yesterday uh, from one of the underwater video, was uh, I had a lot of fish following my gear all the time. So um, by varying that speed up and down, I, can, I was hoping to trigger a bite there. I marked several fish as I went over a ledge, and I was able to get a fish to take the bait. One of the other ways I mentioned that you can fish for cutthroat trout, besides just trolling uh, super baits or spoons, is you can also troll flies. In fact, you can fish flies in a number of ways uh, for these cutthroat. You'll see guys, if they have a kayak that's stable enough to stand in, you can stand and sight cast to fish in the shallows, or you can troll like I'm gonna do here. Or another thing you can, I'll often do is uh, pull up into a shallow area um, and then let the wind push me while I let the, basically let the fly drift with the wind and watch for a strike in front of the kayak rather than behind it. You can even flip your Mirage drive around backwards if you wanna run a dry fly if it's calm enough to do so. Now I've noticed with the fly, fly fishing for these cutthroats, I typically do better when I'm in under 15 foot of water. So I'll move into the shallow areas, control the fly behind the kayak or in front of it just drifting with the wind or even reversing the mirage drive. Oh, I've noticed um, with this sinking line, I even got a little bit of lead on there. Um, one thing you need to do in order to ensure that uh, you get a good hookup when you get a bite is you've got to uh, either set the hook that's in front of you or if you're paddling or pedaling, you can accelerate the kayak to help drive that hook on. There's a lot of stretch with the leader and that uh, fly line. Now there's two ways you can strip a fish in or reel it in. I tend to reel it in have a lot of line out. It's kind of fun to strip them in too. You can really feel, see the rod bend. You know, the fun part. But you have to watch this, this line don't get tangled on stuff in your kayak, so you gotta be mindful of that. Including your rudder, so always watch your rudder and your stripping line out or in. Doesn't feel like a very large fish.
Not bad. Beautiful fish though. Really dark one. He didn't like that net. He popped off the fly just as he got in the net. Wow, look at that fish. That's gorgeous. Let me get it. Come here, buddy. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Man, that's a gorgeous fish. There he goes. Flung fish. Because of the alkalinity of the water, um, it's very slippy. I mean, even if you just get the water on your hands, your hands get, they feel soapy. Um, so the fish are really hard to handle here. Just be aware of that. It might actually be decent, a, a decent idea to have a, a glove of some kind to make it a little easier. That was fun. Let's do that again. When I was fighting that fish, uh, I saw another fish follow up behind him. Uh, there's always a lot of fish in these coves, um, and I have, a lot, I have a lot of luck catching fish in them so far. They tend to, for some reason, the fish in the coves tend to be a little bit smaller than the fish out on the main body of the lake. That's just been my observation these past couple days. But uh, still quality, 16, 18 inch fish. Stripping back and got another one on. So another way you can fight them is you can just reel them in. But it tends to be um, a little more fun to strip them in. Whew. My hands are all slippy from that last fish. Turn of the kayak. There he is. Another beautiful fish, a little bit chromer than the last one. There you go. Beautiful. Go back and get big. Another way to do this is to flip the Mirage Drive uh, backwards and then pedal backwards. Essentially. So show how that's done. Just take, you flip your blades around. And then I just pedal backwards and strip the line out in front of me. I can just troll it backwards or I can 
strip it, I'm going to try trolling. You have to typically adjust the numbers here, but I'm just going to do this for uh, to show you how it's done. Nice thing is you can you can feel the the bite a lot easier because you'll have the rod in your hand typically, and you can set it a little better, get a little more. Just have to remember that everything's in reverse, including your steering. Marking a bunch of fish underneath me right now. Then I can get a bite there. I didn't take long. For fly selection, I used a variety of woolly buggers and hummer flies in black, olive, and brown. I think any streamer that imitates a small bait fish or a large insect uh, will probably perform fairly well at this lake. Omak Lake lies just a few miles outside of the city of Omak, Washington. Currently, a landslide is blocking access to the southern portions of the lake, so you'll have to launch at Nicholson or Beer Can Beach to the north. The Mission Bay, the North Embayment, is closed to all boating between March 1st and May 31st, and uh, also during that time period, the lake is only catch and release. Otherwise, during the rest of the year, you can retain up to three fish, but only one may be over 18 inches, and there's a restriction on fishing from the beach for non-tribal members on the south end of the lake. As always, wear your PFD and have a great time out on the water.